Hey guys and gals, this is Nathan. Welcome to another episode of Combat Coloring 101. This will be episode 10, and today we're talking about the swatch palette. Now, I've gotten a lot of questions lately if I'm going to release like my swatch palette, or and the um, answer is no, I'm not. <laughs> the main reason, it's just something i built up over the years, and uh, it just depends on you know, what book I'm working on or what project, and I'll just throw colors in there. And um, it doesn't have any rhyme or reason. It's just colors that I picked up that I like that I might reuse a lot, and I'll just put them in there. Um, and just to give those to you, I don't feel like you'd be learning anything from it. You know, uh, everybody has, like, their own color tastes and, you know, red colors that I might like, you know, may not work for your project. And of course, colors always change depending on the environment that they're in. Um, you know, a, a nice red color will look different in a white light as opposed to like a cool environment, you know, where there's like blue reflecting off of it. It'll appear more magenta or purplish in the shadows. Um, so you don't want to use like a bright red for that same purpose. And um, I don't really agree with a lot of the other... Uh, tutorials or books that are out there that say hey here's our color palette use this and I don't, I don't think it's it's teaching you guys anything and uh, so what we're gonna do today is I'm just gonna show you uh, the easy way to build up your your own color palette of colors you might like or that you might use and um, you know and you'll learn more from it you'll it helps make you think about you know what colors you might like and the lighting that they're used in so on this page here I just had this is like just regular 11 by 8 half by 11 and I just posted you know a lot of images I found online or you know you could scan in comic books that you like um, I know I have maybe like a two or three like long boxes of comics that I, I would buy just for the colors um, you know that I like and you know I'll go through them and and see you know what might look good in a scene that I'm uh, coloring or for a project I have coming up you know what type of color palette I might like to use and you know you'll scan that in and, and just pick color swatches from it so as you can see here I went ahead and cleared out my color palette that I usually have uh, this is just the default color palette and let me see, it goes through, you know, the gamut of, of your regular colors, a couple uh, uh, warm grays. I guess these would be like French grays, you know, they're like a little bit warmer than uh, a usual warm gray would be. And it has the browns. Usually what I'll do first is I'll hit my default colors and hit X so that white is my foreground color. And I'll just go ahead and fill up these next ones. Uh, if, you, if you're on your eye bucket tool, I'm sorry, if you hit I... You're in your eyedropper tool. You can see that right here. And if you go over your palette, it turns into a paint bucket. And if I just click on that, I can drop that my foreground color, which is white. I'm going to just fill in the rest of the space. And I'm just going to hit OK. Oops. OK, 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 OK. And just because, I don't know, I'm kind of picky about it. You know, like I know this is going to be you know, I'm just separating the colors that I'm using from the the default colors. I mean, I'll, I have no problem going up here and using default colors as well. In fact, like these reds right here are quite nice. They reproduce very nicely. I'll use those a lot. Okay, so we got that, you know, a little bit of separation. And what I'll do, like I was saying, you know, just pick images you know that I like I really like the way these cool grays work against this orangish background so let's say if I want to use that later you know I can just zoom right in on this and I can just pick that color with my eyedropper and I'll just drop that in there you know you can go through and label them if you want you know cool gray you know looks good on this or any notes you might have you could drop those in there you know I like this orange color as well let me just drop that in there it's very subtle. You can see even like this lighter color. So you know, just go through. I really like these types of grays here on on the Batman that Dan Panosian had did for Infinite Crisis cover. So I like those. 
you know, those work really well. Um, skin tones, especially, I'll go through and pick new skin tones all the time. Uh, that's why if you go back and look at my older uh, color palette that you could see in other videos, I have like tons of different gradients of skin tones. And this one here is from uh, Marta Gracia. And I really like this for like a nice indoor uh, cool skin tone. So I'm going to pick like a dark color, maybe, maybe like a, a medium tone to go with that. And, you know, you just want to do three or four. And in this case, I think he yeah, even has like a really lighter color. So those five right there, you know, would be like a, a good way to pick out your colors. Um, you know, this one here is a Tony Harris cover for Ex Machina uh, trade paperback. I really like the, the greens in these skin tones here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick those. You can see there's also like a little bit of warmth in there as well. So it's like a nice range. So go get that green in there. A little bit lighter tone. So you know like those those three I think will do it. Maybe we'll get this lighter reddish color in there as well. Or we could do if you hold down your alt option key it turns the, that into scissors when you're on your eyedropper tool. So that's how you can go in and delete them. And you just watch how you I can order them. I usually like to go in a gradient. It makes things a lot faster when you're uh, when you're looking, you know, for speed. You just want to grab colors and go. I also like this uh, this type of gradient here on this this tealish color. You go like that, like those three, it looks good. Yeah, maybe even this one here, I like that. Well, it's pretty close to this guy here. Yeah, a little bit of different, all right, I'll pick that. Um, same thing, uh, as far as graphic design, these colors here just look awesome. Let's go ahead and pick those colors. You know, um, well, you know they look awesome, like on some business cards or something, those three colors. You can see some of these might, might look similar. You can always go through and clean them up a little bit. You know, if you find yourself referencing, you know, these colors a lot, or maybe if you like this color here more than this color here, that's fine. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but usually if I'm picking colors uh, from a specific source, then I'll, I'll kind of keep those keep, uh, keep those together. Uh, this is a good range here. I'm not sure. Uh, who did the colors on this cover was from the massive uh, number 23 but it's just great as far as mood it's, you know you get a lot of depth going in here um, if you want like a monotone color palette you know this is this is amazing for that so you can just go in here and pick you know a bunch of different colors from it and this isn't going to be really set up as far as you know gradient or anything it's just keeping colors uh, it's kind of, I think I just picked that one. Uh, picking colors of a similar palette, you know, they're going to be in the same kind of area on there. So I really like those greens a lot. It's really well done. Uh, let me zoom in on this. Let me get this color, and that goes along with these ones very well. I like this grayish color. You know, get these background colors as well. You can start to see, you know, the the harmonies that are going on with these colors. Here's a, a page or a panel from Dave Stewart, and you got to pick a lot of these colors. Those are awesome. You can see it's a bunch of grays, you know, but just going between warms and cools, you know, how, how well they really work together. And this is some of the stuff as you're going through, uh, trying to pick colors that you like, you know, you'll, you'll put more, th more thought into it. You know, why does this color work as opposed to something else, you know? So I like all these. And th this is exactly how, you know, I ended up with the palette I'm at right now. Um, just going through, finding stuff that I like. Oops. I don't want to name that color. Don't make me do it. 
There we go. All right. So we got that. I also like this pink. It goes very well with it. That greenish color. And here's a lighter version of it. And then just this wall here in the background. And you can see, you know, again, just the harmony between those colors and how well they work together is pretty awesome. All right. Let's see. And this is, uh, I think this was Dean White. And again, I just really like these kind of cool colors for the skin tone. You know, if you if you bought a book and they're like, oh, here's our here's our skin tones, you know, you wouldn't you wouldn't get this. You know, you, it wouldn't look right if you know if everything else is cool color and you just had like a regular daylight skin tone, it wouldn't look as good. So I like that. And then uh, Marty Gracia's uh, his red colors always pop right off the page. So let's go ahead and grab those as well. That's kind of similar. Let's get rid of that one. Let me put that one there. I think that looks pretty good. Maybe is that one brighter? Or is that the same? That's the same. Let me just delete that. All right. So we just picked all those colors off this page right here. I have another one set up. The um, Elizabeth uh, Brett Weiser. She's coloring uh, velvet, and it's just an amazing color job. I love it. Uh, let's see. Here's like for the shadow, for the skin tone. And again, this is like another nighttime uh, palette. But with that teal in there, just adds it to, you know, just takes it to a next level. So we've got those, you know, those four colors right there that work very well. I just want to get some of these, some of these teal colors, you know, that she's been using in this book work amazing. So again, this is like another example of where your regular skin tones wouldn't work in this environment. So you have like a nice gradation of guys right there. And here's uh, Elizabeth again on the, she's this uh, Fatale. There's another book she colors it does an amazing job on. And again, you know, just the, I just want to grab a gamut of these guys because all these colors, again, it's just amazing harmonies and they work together so well. So you can grab, here's like a darker teal and then with this other color for the grass. This bluish color for the shirt and then a lighter version of that. I like this color, this olive grayish color for the pants. Looks awesome. And again, here's some other, you know, nighttime skin tones that work very well. So we'll grab those as well. So you can see, you know, I'm just going through and picking colors and of course you get into the Battle Chasers liquid stuff, which is always fun. Um, and I think, because I had my palette for so long, a lot of the stuff as well was built up from uh, from stuff that liquid was doing, like their greens and I love this, uh, this golden hair that Gully has, looks awesome. So, you know, again, just setting up the gradation for that. Um, let's see. I like this, uh, this orangish color. The background looks, looks great. And, you know, another, another case of skin tones, you know, where everything's working very well together. So I'll go ahead and, and pick some colors from that. This, it works as well for, like, uh, photographs and everything, too. Uh, if you like like a, a really nice sky, I'm just picking these here for the for the other lighting source and uh, some more reds. Uh, for skies and whatnot, like what I might do, I might go ahead and and blur like a photo a little bit more. Uh, that way, there I'm not so much concentrated on the photo itself. It's more of you know the colors that the photo has. And let's pick this uh, this rim color here as well. That looks cool. Um, and again, I think we'll finish it off just by getting this other greenish color. Again, it's like a cooler green than what you would normally see. And get that highlight color as well. 
So as you can see, you know, it's very easy just to go through and, you know, you don't need to download anybody's palette or anything like that. And, you know, you can set up your own and you can see as you're doing it why this, why these colors are working together and, you know, you're, you're learning as the same time you're doing it instead of just hitting that download button and then wondering why these colors aren't working together. Um, but I, I think that's going to do it. Oh, actually, let me go, go ahead and show you. Um, you want to, after you're done... Uh, you want to save it, of course. So you're to save swatches, and um, you know you could just save them to your desktop, or you know if you have a you know a palette folder, which I, I would recommend doing. Um, you know maybe you set it up in your Dropbox or somewhere you know one of your cloud uh, places you might have where you can access it from all your different computers you might have or or whatever. Um, you know name it like your name swatches, and I recommend dating it as well. Um, I have like tons of swatch palettes that are, you know, sometimes older, like if you have to uh, load up Photoshop on another computer, if your Photoshop or your computer crashes, you have to, you know, do a reboot, you know, from the start and you have to install Photoshop again, you're not going to have the swatches when you reload Photoshop. So you're going to want to save those and, you know, have it a name that you'll remember. I'd recommend doing it maybe once a month, you know, saving out your swatches. Um, I'd say like at the at the least once a month or every two months and you know just name it the month and and the year and it'd make it easy for you to always go back and figure out what your what your latest one is and um, yeah it's always gonna be like an ACO file so that you know what it is but I always recommend you know you like your name the uh, swatches and then the date would be the easiest way to do it so it'd just be let me see Nathan swatches uh, what is it the June twenty fourteen and then just save that to your desktop or like I said in your palettes folder um, yeah that's gonna do it like short and sweet um, you know easy way to go about uh, make building up your own color palette all right thanks a lot for watching guys and I'll see you guys next week. All right, thanks. Oh, before I forget, uh, Facebook fan page, uh, check it out. I'll put the link in the description. And any questions or uh, anything, I'd recommend like qu uh, questions if we put them up on the Facebook uh, fan page now. Uh, be a lot easier. Everybody could go and check it out. Uh, if not, if it's specific to this video, then by all means, you know, put it in the comments here on YouTube. Uh, also check out my DeviantArt. Uh, account and for more more of my color work and that'll be in the description as well and that's it for real all right thanks for watching guys and i'll see you soon bye